Hey, those of you who've been around, you know what housekeeping rules I'm going to give you, right? I'd like for you to go find your email right now, and I'd like for you to take a knife and stab it as many times as you can. Just stab it and kill it. If you can go ahead and completely close out of your email, if you can go ahead and text the people you love, if you're expecting something like... You know, like just text them and go, hey, I'm locked in for the next no more than an hour. It should not take near that amount of time, but just block out the hour because I will give you some things that you can work on. And I promise you, after what we talk about, there's at least one or two things that you're going to want to kind of sketch out and you're going to need the space to do it. So make sure you do that. I've worked super hard the last 30 days to put this. This is a brand new masterclass that I've built and uh, worked super hard. We're not making you guys pay money to be here, but you are paying with your time and attention. And so I'm going to give you all I got for the next little bit. You know that. So a couple of private questions that have come in that we'll make sure to get back to knowing if our salaries are where they should be. Also figuring out a bonus plan that might work for our company structure. So that's a, that's a good question. Another one is a balancing act to determine what's market rate versus fair rate versus a salary I, I can afford. I'm actually going to talk directly to that. So we'll, we will certainly get to that. And then also we're about to open, hopefully in June, I plan to offer 401k and profit sharing to them. Any suggestions? Yes, yes, yes. And so we will definitely talk about that as well um, to give you some su suggestions on what to do with that. All righty. So we've got all those. I'm going to try and come back to those. If I forget, please remind me so that we can get back to those. We've got a few of you in here. So we got critical mass, which is good. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we may have some more folks uh, trickle in, but as you have any questions or thoughts or whatever, please go ahead and put those in the chat window so we can keep a catalog of those. All right. And again, put yourself on mute. I think everybody is on, uh, most everybody's on mute. And then also turn your cameras on if you don't mind. Love to be able to see you. All right. So let's talk about this idea of compensation. For those of you I have not met, my name's Scott and uh, we started Business on Purpose Wow. Almost 10 years ago, 2015. So it's been quite some time. And we're here for one reason, and it's to liberate you from the chaos that you feel so that you can make time for the things that really, really matter. And those that work with us and do the work and dive all in, they see that liberation. And those that don't, they continue to kind of spin. We had a guy, This I'm not making this up. I was speaking in Austin uh, about three weeks ago. A guy comes up to me. This is exactly how it went down. He comes up to me and he goes, Hey, and I, when I saw him, I was like, God, you look familiar. And I've probably seen you here before. And he said, Hey, I don't know if you remember me. I was here last year. I said, Oh, that's awesome, man. I said, well, how's it going? And he looked at me deadpan. He's probably I'm profiling, but he's probably 55. He looked at me deadpan and he said, I'm in the same place I was last year when I saw you. Oh, uh, like we can fix that. If you want to fix that. But the, uh, the thing I'll tell all of you is that implementation is what's going to help with this. And we help with this as well. But I really want you to dive in and lock in during this time because it's important. This time is very, very important to your business, to your family, to all of these things that we talk about all the time. So I want to make sure that you really are locked in. All right. So I've got my chat up. I've got our participants here so I can see everybody. And if anybody else comes in, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get us back to our slides. By the way, we've got a team of 10, just so you know. So it's not just me. We've got a team, full-time team of 10. And with that team, we are constantly in a state. We work with about 90 business owners a day around the country. And with that team, of which we're very, very proud of that team, we have the, also the privilege of working with our key leaders and doing this. And one of the biggest issues we deal with is this issue of compensation. We get the frustrating side of this, right? When it gets to us, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And so I want you to hear me say that the reason we are providing this masterclass is due to an overwhelming pandemic of a perceived money problem. And the reality, it is masking, and it's masking the truth that money is actually not the problem. I think it's actually the process of rewarding money for the work. That's the problem. We can't figure out that system. You know how we've always said, your product is not your product. Your process is your product. Your product's not your product. Your process is your product. I don't think we have a money problem. I think we have a process of rewarding money problem. And so we treat compensation like a reactive Band-Aid just trying to stop the bleeding and yet never really healing the wound, you know? And so let me talk about the purpose of our time together. My aim over the next few minutes is to create clarity in the role money plays in the life of a business that's going to maximize your motivation. It's going to minimize your frustration. And we're going to do it through those RPMs we talked about. Repetition, predictability, and meaning. So let me talk about some ground rules. A, I want you to turn off everything that if you're like driving around, running around, like half paying attention to me, 
you honestly might as well not be on this because we're going deep right now. So if you're going to be here, lock in. That's my ask of you. Don't obsess over the exceptions. The 5% of what I say, you're going to hear a lot of what I say and go, well, but stop. Don't lock in on the 95% of the rule because 95% of what I say is going to be true that you experience, not because it's what I said, but it's because of what you experience because that's what we hear. Also a ground rule is I'm going to commit, ask you to commit to go run an actual compensation or reward scenario as soon as we wrap up. That's that whole block and time thing that I want you to do. So as soon as we do, you're not done. It's when you hit end. In fact, you can keep the thing on and just sit there if you want. But I want you to go run an actual scenario. I'm going to give you a tool. Oh, let me tell you this first. We're an educational company. We're not serving as professional or legal or financial advice. So any decision you make based on what I'm talking about is yours solely. It's your discretion. And the on-purpose group will not be held liable in any way. You know, I got to say it, right? All right. So here's the tool. There's a book I read uh, a few months ago. Actually, Chris Corman recommended this to me. Scaling Up Compensation, probably the best compensation book I've read. A lot of what I'll talk about will be sort of based out of this. And so it's a good reference tool to be able to go back to Scaling Up Compensation. So if you want to see that, you can do that. Now, let's talk about the behavior of money. This is really, really important. Money has behavior. It is a thing that moves humanity, right? It moves people. Should it? I, that's a different discussion. But the reality is there are a lot of people, maybe some people on this call, that move and motivate their life around this idea of money. So money clearly has behavior. So let's talk about it. A dollar is not a dollar. This is really important. A dollar in is always less than a dollar. Think about that last receivable that you just got. What was it? 100 grand, 40 grand, 200,000, 5,000, 500, whatever your last receivable was. Did you get to keep all of that? No, of course you didn't. You had to pay taxes and overhead and payroll and everything else. So a dollar in is always less than a dollar, but a dollar out is always more than a dollar. So you went to lunch today and you bought a $9.95 sandwich. Did you pay $9.95? No, you paid more than that. You paid taxes and that silly tip, even though they didn't do anything extra, but whatever. So a dollar in is always less than a dollar and a dollar out is always more than a dollar. A dollar in and of itself has behavior and we need to pay attention to that behavior. Now, I'm going to give you a series of pithy statements. I've never done this in a master class before, but I'm going to try it. And I've actually done this a couple of times at Builder 20 Clubs over the last couple of months and it's worked really well. So it's not me necessarily like telling a story and making a point. I'm literally going to take phrases that I've heard from different tools and different conversations over the last few months that I run through the lens of vision, mission, values, and I go, wait a second, I think there's truth here. So let's walk down this lane together. Ready? You're probably going to want to get your pins ready because there's going to be some things here that are like, wow, that is noteworthy. Again, not because I said it. I've lifted every bit of this from other people for the most part. There are a couple of things we've built out of this from this information. So here it is. You ready? Money is not logical. It is psychological. Money is not logical. It is psychological. If you ever want to sit down and have a logical, regional discussion with somebody around money, it will not happen. But if you want to have a discussion around money with somebody and are willing to think psychologically through it, kindness, generosity, thoughtfulness, forethought, planning, all that, now we can have a conversation. Bern Harnish also said this, nobody has ever increased their motivation due to an increase in base pay. So I want you to go back and think about all those people that you gave a base pay increase to. Why? Because they held you hostage or whatever. Nobody has ever seen an increased motivation due to their increased based compensation. Now, I know some of you are going to start kicking yourselves already because you're like, God, just gave one of those to try and make them happy, right? Next statement. Most people don't leave because of money. Most people leave because money is not worth the chaos that they are subject to. That is a very clear statement. They don't leave because of money. They leave because the money is not worth the chaos. Clear the chaos, align the money to performance, and you will create a setting where team members will only leave when values or vision are no longer aligned instead of money being the factor. So if you start to go sideways on values, vision, mission, clarity, then they'll leave. But they don't leave because of money. They leave because money is not worth the chaos. Now let's drill down a little bit more. I'm going to give you some compensation philosophy statements. Most of these are from Vern Harnish. He said, you must align your compensation with your culture and vision. You must align your compensation with your culture and your vision. God, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to give you some diagrams a little bit later on to help you understand that. 
listen to this. If your culture is not calendared and your vision is not written, so if you don't have a written vision story, those of you who've been around a while, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't have a written vision story and you're not reviewing it, then start there. Don't even get this compensation discussion that we're talking about. Start there because where comp is misaligned with vision, that's where people will lack clarity and they'll start to leave. If your culture is not calendared, for those of you that are around, culture calendar, ding, 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 this is something you desperately need to install if you've not done it already. When your culture's calendared and your vision's written, now we can start aligning our compensation to our culture. Second phrase, pay for quality and output and not for time. Stop paying for time. Now I'm looking at some of the architects in the room going, wait a second, but we're billing people. Uh, I look at the lawyers in the room and go, but we pay on billing, 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 CPAs, billing, billing, billing. Calm down. We want to pay for quality and output, not for time. If they're billing hours, but their quality sucks, then we can't pay them that rate because they're not giving us the revenue value for what we're looking for. This is a, a chemistry. That's all this is, is chemicals in, chemicals out, right? We're not talking about all that stuff. And yet it's psychology all at the same time. Pay for quality, not for time. Next phrase, compensation. I love this one. Should intentionally attract the right people. The right people should look at your compensation plan and go, ooh, I like that. And compensation plans should intentionally repel the wrong people. They should look at your compensation plan and go, ooh, I don't like that. Okay, you just got a nod. Maybe this isn't the person because you've written out your comp plan and gone, but this is what fits the vision, the mission, values, the alignment, what I'm compelled to do, right? Compensation should attract the right people, repel the wrong people. This is a big one. Salary is not an expense. Payroll is not an expense. It is an investment. Rent is an expense. Internet's an expense. Car payments an expense. Insurance an expense. All those are things are expenses. Salary is an investment. We've got to change our mindset around that. Next phrase. Don't come on this call. Don't sit with your buddy in a mastermind. Don't come on a coaching call with us and copy other people's compensation plans. Now, we'll give you templates to get started, save you a bunch of time. But we want you to start from scratch from the philosophy side of things. Why? It's because your compensation plan does is not going to work with the next person's compensation plans. But we're both builders. But we both run ice cream shops. But we've got no, 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 no. I could have twin sisters both running ice cream shops with the same name, serving the same products side by side in the same town. And yet the culture of their business can be very different. Therefore, their compensation structure should be different as well. Don't blind copy this old phrase, Scott, don't you just have this in a box? You can just plug this in? No, 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 no. Please don't ever buy that, whatever that is, all right? Do not copy other people's compensation plans. Start from scratch. Next phrase, there must be a different in pay between high average and low performing people. I just realized I don't have a slide for this. There must be a difference in pay between high average and low performing people. But Scott, they're the same role. There must be a difference in pay between high average and low performing people. Why? It's because your high performers will smell it a mile away. And if they're being comped at the same level that your lower performance are being comped, they'll smell it a mile away and you're going to lose them. Now this one, the goal of compensation, here's your goal right there on the screen to incent behaviors. That's the goal of compensation to incent a certain behavior in your team that customers appreciate and compel that customer to pay you for it. All right, I'm gonna read that again. The goal of compensation is to incentivize a behavior in your team that customers appreciate, and it compels that customer to pay you for it. So you paid a team member to have a certain behavior, the customer loves it, and now the customer pays you. And in the BOP world, the customer pays you more than you pay the person. <laughs> that's for profit. So in that cycle, that's what we wanna see. But that's the goal of compensation. It's not to make Jimmy happy. It's not to, it, it, the goal is to incentivize behaviors in your team that customers appreciate, compel them to pay you for it. Next phrase, worry about what people do. If you're going to worry, worry about what people do and not what people cost. Vern Harnish will say this. He says, one highly paid person is worth way more than three regular paid people. One highly paid person is worth way more than three regularly paid people. Worry about what people do, not what they cost. I want you to consider your verbiage. Now I'm using the word compensation. And so I wanted to stop at this point and ask ourselves, 
Is that the right word? So I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm not going to do it here. I want you to write the word compensation down and write the word reward down and then go to the dictionary. When we get done, please don't do it now, but when we get done, I want you to go look at the definition of both words. I think you'll be compelled to start thinking differently about the terms that you actually use because those terms sort of incense certain behaviors from us. So think about the word reward versus the word compensation. And so instead of a comp package, it's a reward package. Now, this final little pithy statement is there are three elements that should drive base pay, not variable pay, not commission, not incentives, base pay, okay? Three things. Number one, competencies and not years of experience. But Lee, I've been here for eight years and I've breathed and I've kept a heartbeat for 365 days over eight years. I know I suck at my job, but yeah, I've been here for eight years. So I should, no, 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 no. The first element that should drive base pay is a competency, not years of experience. Number two, sustained performance. That first word is key. Sustained performance and not past peaks. You remember what I did three years ago? You remember what I did last year? No, sustained performance over time. That's where we're going to get in this idea of fixed pay and variable pay. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. The third element that should drive base pay is the market. Now, we always jump there, right? We, that's the first place we go. We start looking at the market. What are they paying? What are they paying? I guess I got to match it and add 3% or something like that. No, no, no. That's the third in line of the elements. We should certainly look at the labor market. And most of you are in associations nationally, like the National Association of Home Builders or AIA or whatever. You can pull reports and get some of that market data. You can pull it locally, regionally, and nationally. So start looking at that. But that is number three in the line. Number one, competency. Number two, sustained performance. Number three, market value. Notice what's not on this list but I need more to live. It's not on the list. <laughs> all right, let's talk about compensation strategies, all right? One compensation strategy, we like this one, we talk about it a lot, it's called a fixed and variable strategy. And you're like, well, I get the variable pay for, and variable pay, I mean incentives, commissions, kicker bonuses, whatever. That's a variable pay, it changes, right? A fixed is a base pay. It doesn't change. So you might say, hey, we've got a role. And right now, most of you have somebody that is in a what we call a fixed base pay role. They might make, let's say a superintendent in your market makes 75 grand and you're paying them 75 grand. But at the end of the, end of the year, you do what we call a, but we like you bonus. That's, that's the official name of it, but we like you bonus. And we get to December and we're like, God, but I really like him. So you get $800. I don't like her. She gets thousand dollars. Why more than the eight hundred? Because I don't want to piss her off, and so I'll just pay her more. Like that's how we do our bonus structures, and we got to get away from that completely. Away from that. So how do we do that? If we start looking at this and realizing that, wait a second, we can start doing base and sometimes lower base, not to cheapen it. Hang tight. Lower base with variable pay that actually gets them higher than what they wanted. Hey, I want eighty grand. Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to try to get you to ninety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay you 60 and then we're going to set a variable pay structure in place based on performance that if you hit it and these numbers are reasonable and we've done the budget and the planning for it, then you'll actually make 90 this year because we can pay for it because I'm tying the variable performance to revenue. But if we don't make the revenue, then I can't pay you. So fixed, fixed and variable pay is what we look at, even for non-sales roles. So let's talk about Fixed pay. How do you come up with a fixed pay? All right, this is new. All right. If you've been around us for a long time, you've not seen this before. This is literally the second public talk that I'm doing with this pie chart. I just did one for uh, all of our BOP clients. We're starting to do training for their new hires. Any of their new hires that bring on, we're doing business training for them. So I want you to use this as an example. Here's a superintendent role as an example, right? Some of you may not have superintendents. That's okay. Fill in an accounting role or whatever you want to talk about. Now, in this role, if you think about this role, not most of you look at the role and just go, it's a superintendent role. No, a role is actually looked at like this pie chart. About 40% of a superintendent's job is actually superintending, you know, on the job site, coordinating, talking to subs, making things clean, whatever. But there's another 15, 20% that's administrative work. There's another 10, 15% that's marketing. You're like, why would a superintendent market? How about job signage? It's where builders get a ton of their work from. How about job site cleanliness? It's where a ton of builders get their work from. So they're in charge of marketing to a certain extent. Not all of marketing, but their particular role. 
we're actually paying them to be a part of a team. If you're a BOP client, which I think a couple of you are, as a part of a team, we push you guys to do culture calendar, team meetings, departmental meetings, executive meetings, one-on-one check-ins, and annual performance reviews. We are actually paying our employees to show up to those things. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, I don't really have the time. Sorry, man. I'll see you later. No, 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 no. We're paying you to show up to the team meeting. So you cannot schedule around that. That's not an option. We're paying you to show up to that thing. And so I want you to start thinking about every role in your business as a pie chart of a collection of things. Now, watch this. Watch how this works. Superintending, communications, team, marketing, admin. Each of those, if you're paying this role, I'm going to use a round number just for round number's sake. If you're paying this role $100,000, then what you're really saying is I'm paying this superintendent $40,000 to superintend. I'm now paying the superintendent, let's call communications 20%. I'm paying them $20,000 a year to communicate based on our process and what we have. I'm paying them $10,000 a year to show up to team meetings, departmental meetings, one-on-one check-ins. I'm paying them 10 grand a year to market. I'm paying them 20 grand a year to do their administrative work. So when you hear things like, ah, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, Jim, I just don't have time. I just don't have, you know, I got, I'm on job sites, superintendent all day. Then you look at their pie chart and go, hey, just a reminder, I'm paying you 40% of your compensation to superintend, but I'm paying you 20% of your compensation to admin. So if you're not doing your admin, then the business is paying you. Sorry, let me rephrase the language. The business is paying you, not I. The business is paying you to do these things. And so if you're not doing your admin, then the business is paying you for money it's not getting a result for. Whew. God, we need to unbutton the collars. It's getting a little warm in here, isn't it? She whiz. All right. Guys, this one pie chart that I've started to roll this out, like in, I'm not with this visual pie chart. As I mentioned, this today's the first day we're doing this. But the concept to uh, some different people around the country in the talks that we've been doing, this is landing. It is landing. And we just did it with a bunch of new hires, employees, and it's landing with them too. They get it. They can see their job role. So this is a clarity that you can bring to a job role if you can start lining out this pie chart and not only tie their job role to it with their weekly schedule, but also you can tie their compensation package to it. X percent here, X percent here. One little concept I do want to tell you, if you're going to do a base plus variable pay package, I highly recommend making the base what we call a livable base, a livable base. What does that mean? They can pay their rent. They can pay their groceries. They can pay fundamental things. Yeah. They may not be able to pay the expensive private school or different things like that with base pay, but they can pay their foundational things. All right, so now let's go to the variable pay, variable pay. All right, what is that? Well, we always want to shoot for simple. So before you get into any conceptual things with variable pay, incentives, commissions, bonuses, anything like that, I want you to think of the word simple. An action will deliver a result. No action delivers no result. All right, so when we're thinking about variable pay, an action delivers a result. If you don't get that action, then you don't get the result. Percentages in your variable pay should always tie to an increase in revenue. If revenue or net income cannot be increased, then we've got to second guess why we're increasing compensation. And you got to call it what it is. It's charity at that point. I hope I'm not offending you. I did, have I lost anybody? I don't think I have. Actually, I think we've gained a couple of people. So I think we're doing good. All right. An action must deliver a result. No action delivers no result. What do I mean by that? If you say, hey, I'm going to begin to incentivize you on quarterly billing, quarterly billing. And in our business, I'm just making these numbers up. In our business, we do $10 million a year. So that's $2.5 million per quarter on average. Obviously, we weight these out based on seasonality, but $2.5 million on average that we do. So in order to build $2.5 million, I'm going to do a little calculation here. Two, five million divided by four. Dang it. Some of you already have this in your head. Three, sorry, it's 833,000. So you know we need to do two, build 2.5 in a quarter and we need to build 833,000 per month. And so if you look at that quarter and go, all right, so if we build 250, that's like our threshold because we're budgeted to do 10 million this year, which means our expenses are there and all that stuff. Then I'm going to pay your role or the business is going to pay your role $1,000. Just making these numbers up. If we can build 2.8 million, then the business is going to pay you $5,000. So we set these little thresholds. Well, what if we don't hit the 2.5? What's my bonus then? We didn't increase revenue, right? And so you've got to look at it like that. Now, some of you 
You go, well, my person can't live on the livable base if we don't meet budget. Okay, then you might need to raise the livable base up and you might need to lower the, the variable pay. So you start moving these things like levers back and forth, right? Just be very, again, chemistry. I put this chemical in, this reaction happens. It's not in the ether. It's not just sort of amoebic in how it works. So I want you to kind of side by side, put base pay, variable pay, and then their levers and they work up. I'm going to show you a performa here in just a minute that will visually help you to do this. A couple other things, and I'll come back to this when we show the performa. Talking about compensation, when should you review compensation? I'm, and we are of the opinion that you should review compensation once per year. And this is key. It's not at the same time that you talk about annual performance reviews. It needs to be in a separate meeting separate those things. We've got to divorce compensation from just, it comes every year. It comes every year. So you can have an annual performance review meeting, which you need to have. We've got templates for all that too. And you need to have a compensation meeting. And when you talk about your compensation, here's what just on a Google doc or something on a spreadsheet, here are the things that we can talk about. Ready? Tell them their base. Plus, tell them their variable and how they achieve it. Plus, line out their payroll taxes, office space, other roles, any other line items that go into their role. And I'll explain that in a minute. Plus their health insurance, life insurance, disability, anything that you're paying over and above. Because look, all of these things are required of the business to pay out. Remember, dollar out is more than a dollar. And so it's not just the 70 grand that was base pay. It's the 70 grand plus whatever they made in variable comp. Let's call it 10 grand plus the over and above. What is that? Well, we usually put a 26% mark on that. What do I mean? We take the 80 and we add, I got this from a guy named Daryl Lyons. We add 26%. You can add 20 or 30 if you wanted. And we add 26% to the 80. Why? Because we got to pay for payroll taxes. We got to pay for office space. We got to pay for, if we didn't have this role, there's a lot of things we wouldn't have to pay for. But because we have this role, we've got to pay for these other things. And so you're not paying them 80 grand you're paying them 80 plus about 20 to 30%. That's what the business is actually paying out. And then you're not done there because if you offer benefits, somebody asked earlier about benefits, we'll talk about. If you offer benefits, that's a cost as well. So that needs to go in there. They need to see what their role is requiring the business to invest in. So the business is not investing in 80 grand. The business is investing in 80 grand plus 20, so that'd be 16, 20, about 100 grand right here. And then benefits, let's just call it another another five. So the business is actually paying 105. And what they see in their paycheck is 80, which is actually less than that, right? Because they got to pay all that stuff on their end. And so they need to see this. And then if we run it through our ratio, which I'll talk about in a minute, lining this stuff out is really helpful. You can show them this. And then when you talk about next year's compensation plan, go, hey, let's isolate this variable pay. And let's ask ourselves, how can we increase this with an increase in revenue? Well, don't I get a base pay increase? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't need to do that because I think we can get you more money if we hit certain targets through variable pay. So let's figure out some cool and unique ways to be able to get you some more money that way by hitting certain targets. Okay, Whew. let's take a deep breath. There's a lot here. I know it's the first time I've done this masterclass, so I'm just starting to realize this is, this is a lot, but I think it's still good. Oh, one other thing I forgot to talk about was vacation benefits. When somebody takes 15 days off a year, which is totally cool, and they're paid for it, that's a benefit. The business does not get the value of their presence during those days and yet pays out. They need to see that. Don't make them feel guilty. In fact, celebrate it. I'm glad you took time off. And so the business invested in that time off for you. Let's talk about bonus plans for just a second. Most of your bonus plans are way, way too complicated. If it takes you longer than 30 seconds to explain it, burn it. <laughs> get rid of it. It's not worth it. We've probably helped build I don't know, 40, 50 bonus plans over the last 10 years, and they're all super complex and none of them work. And so here's a basic thing to remember about bonus plans. If you hit quarterly billing, pay an incentive at a percentage of the person's salary. So if you pay them hundred grand and you decide, you know what, I'm going to put in there that they're, they qualify up to 10% of their salary for bonus. 10% of salary of hundred grand is 10 grand. Divided by four quarters, $2,500 a quarter. Okay, what do they have to hit that quarter in order to qualify for the $2,500? Side note, if you're doing your subdivided bank accounts, which I hope all of you are, set up a separate bank account for your bonus and start flushing money in there because it will make you excited to pay these bonuses out when you do it. Whereas if the money's not in that account, you're going to become begrudging and a curmudgeon, and I don't want you to do that. 
So set up another bank account, start sweeping in there because you want to be excited about paying this out when it comes time to it. We actually have a lot of you that are excited about paying your taxes now, just because you have a tax account, there's money in there. I know you don't like it when you really stop and think about it, but fundamentally. So what do you need to put together a bonus plan? Number one, you need a mindset reshift to say basic, basic, basic. If we hit this, they get this, and it's based on their percentage of their salary. Here's the nice thing when you put it on the percentage of the salary. Instead of your budget saying we pay them $100,000, your budget can actually say we pay one hundred and ten, because you're assuming you go ahead and pay them, and that way you can budget for it. And you can look at your budget through what you think you're going to budget for rather than just making this stuff up at the end of the year. Three things you need to build a bonus plan. Number one, a budget. That's it. Number two, a pro forma, which I'll show you. Don't be overwhelmed by that. All that means is budget is today or in the past. Pro forma is what if. That's it. And then you need accurate reporting. We need to be able to pull some reports. So how do we determine compensation rewards? All right, let's talk about budget and pro formas please do a budget. I actually took a screenshot. This is a real screenshot of our chart of accounts as a business, like business on purpose chart of accounts. Now you can see all these plus signs over here. So when you click on those, they, you know, they scale. So it's way longer than this, but you see the kind of the core elements and how we break down our chart of accounts. You don't have to break yours down that way. Talk to your CPA or your accountant about how to do a chart of accounts, but you need a chart of accounts and you need dollar signs on the East side of that and go ahead and put that down well, gosh, Scott, that's way too much money. Okay, then you're not generating enough or you're spending too much, right? The business will start speaking to you. And so you need a budget compensation. You need to go over here and then you need to start looking at your ratio and asking yourself, okay, with this idea of personnel, you know, we always ask, how much should I compensate? Remember, we're looking at their capabilities way before we're looking at the market. So when you open up payroll, it's not just payroll, by the way, it's payroll and benefits. So you got to include all that. And you start adding that up and play with the numbers, lever the numbers on there so you can see how it impacts your net income when you look at it. Remember to look at this as an investment. All these other things are expenses, but this is an investment when you go in there. So go in there, start to set your initial number, then start to work on it. And you go, God, my payroll is way too high. Okay, start to bring those numbers down, see how we can bring revenue up and align it. So you need a chart of accounts in a budget. That's what we're looking for. It's going to tell you to do a lot. Okay, next thing is a pro forma. Yes. Okay, so everybody sees that pro forma, right? The orange and blue thing that's on there. Okay, here's what we do. I want you to follow me around a little bit on this. Up here, anything in orange is where I can put numbers in. All right? Anything in blue, that's automatic. That's calculated. But numbers in. So watch up here at the top. I'm not going to draw anymore. I'm just going to type, and you'll have to look where I'm at. So I'm at cell C2 up here. So year one based compensation, if I wanted to start somebody at $50,000, and maybe I put them on a 5% commission, you see that right there? Now I can change this, I can put it at 10 if I want, changes all the numbers, but I'm just gonna put it at five for now. I've got an overhead charge of 30. Wait, Scott, what was that? Okay, here it is. Remember, it's payroll taxes, benefits, office space, all that extra stuff, because we have them that we're gonna, that we're gonna have to pay out. So I've got all this calculated in. Now, how do you calculate for revenue? Notice our revenue number right here is zero. Why? It's because I've sold nothing and I've got prices for nothing. So let's say Bob's an architect and he sells one, I realize how billing works, but nonetheless, he sells one set of plans in the month of January and we do tiered pricing and say his lowest tier pricing is $10,000, his next tier is $20,000, his next tier is $40,000, you know, kind of an ABC level, right? And I get it. It's not perfect. It's not a rocket. It's not exact science, but it gets pretty close. And so I've got one unit selling at $10,000 right there. And these are all calculated here. So pricing one actually should be product type one. So pricing one and product type or yeah, pricing one and product type one go together. So this unit matches with this dollar figure. If I put one unit of a 20,000, it would change it. Now look at our revenue, it's $30,000, right? So it's all calculation. I'm just gonna keep this at zero for now. And then I'm gonna come out here and Bob sells a $20,000 set of architectural plans in the third month of year one. And then he comes down here and sells a 40,000. And so you can see Bob's revenue is 10,000 that month, nothing this month, 20 grand this month, zero this month, 40 grand this month. And because my 50 grand, I can start, these are extra things, right? These are extra things, not total revenue necessarily, because we're hiring somebody new. We need to see what their role impacts on that. 
And so we just come in and start to look and go, okay, if I paid this person 50,000 and gave them a five, uh, 5% 5 commission, my total revenue that month's 10 grand, I'm paying that person 4166. What is that? It's 50 grand divided by 12. I'm then paying 1250 and all the extra stuff. What's that? That's 30%. That's that 30% right there. And I'm paying a commission of 208. That's my 5%. So all the out that I'm paying is 4160, 1250, and 208 under this scenario. And so I'm paying out 5625. Now we've got other things on here that'll help you determine what the delta on that is. Right now, you don't need to see that. So don't worry about it. This month is a delta is going to be a loss because 5625 minus 10 grand is 40 something, 40, like 4,000 something. But 5,600 minus nothing is negative 5,600. And so you can start to see in pro forma, you're answering the question, what if? So if I did this over time and sold one in January, one in March, one in May, two in June, because I think there's seasonality. So I'll put two here and you start running scenarios. That's all you're doing is running scenarios. Then you'll start to see and go, you know what? I'm actually making a fair amount of money. I could raise this up to $55,000. Oops, $55,000 and maybe 6%. What would that do? Okay. So it starts to change. You can see that a little bit. So that, okay, that adds about seven, $800 a month that I'll be paying out, but I'm really confident in my revenue projections. So yeah, I feel good about that. Hey man, uh, we're going to start you to 55. Oh, wait, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to 50 because I think 50 is good, but I'm going to raise this up to 10% and show so where I can variable this stuff, right? Move it around. It gives me some variable leverage. And you start to look at this stuff. So I got my budget, which is past looking, and it tells me what I'm spending. And then I've got my pro forma, my what if, what if. And if any of you guys don't work with us, what we can do, and I'll show you later, you can hop on a call with Sean, one of our coaches, and he can actually give you this template, walk you through it, and help you run through a scenario if you want. All right, because I know I'm kind of I'm not flying, but I am kind of flying past this a little bit. Okay, now. Couple other things that you need to be aware of. You guys are hanging in good. This is this is really good. I hope it's super super helpful. Is an increase incentive should equal an increase in income. We're about to land the plane here in just a minute. An increase in any incentive should come with an increase in income. And sometimes, guys, it's good to invite them in to help get them to help you think about new ways to increase income, and then they can be incentivized by that if it makes sense. Obviously, be careful. But nonetheless, all right, so here's some action items. You ready? What I want you to do, because I know you all have written org charts, <laughs> I want you to go to your org chart and I want you to pick one role. I want you to set your budget to see what your payroll dollars are for that role. Okay, so pick a role and I want you to set, look at your budget and set a payroll dollar for that role. And really think about a range. Like I'll go back to superintendent. A range would be like a 50 to a 65, right? Kind of get a range. So those numbers you can play with when you do your pro forma. Then what I want you to do is pull up a pro forma and start running scenarios. Put dollar figure in, run what if. That pro forma I showed you actually has a year one, two, and three. So you could do three years out of scenarios if you wanted to. And I want you to start asking these questions. What's the base range? All right, let's start there. What's the base range? Man, remember, nobody ever got more motivation from base pay. Money psychological, not logical. What's base pay? Number two, what does the ratio tell you about how much new revenue needs to be produced? Now, one thing I did not go over, and I'll remind you of, we say this all the time, is we're looking for at least a one to three ratio. What does that mean? For every $1 we invest in a team member, we expect $3 to be generated in real revenue after cost of goods home builders, remodelers, those of you who have big cost of goods, after cost of goods. So if you're doing a million dollar project, cost of goods, 70%, you have $300,000 left. That's the number we're looking at. So for every dollar you spend, we need $3 returned in real revenue. Super important ratio to be able to run. I would dare say most of you are probably like a one-to-one -one or a one-to-two ratio on some of that. So ask the base range, ask the ratio, and then go. What's the mix of compensation between base and variable? Base and variable. And always think as it relates to variable compensation, simple flat fee. Try to stay away from, okay, the first $100,000 you make, you get 8%. The second $100,000 you make, you get three. Like your accountant's going to shoot you if you start doing that. And then you need to decide, are these weekly, monthly, quarterly, semesterly, or annually payouts? 
We usually suggest starting with a quarterly payout. It gives you enough time to make sure billing gets in and you can even do a delayed pay one month and just tell them that's the terms. We're going to rank you based on Q1, but we're not going to know until, you know, end of April or May because we need to make sure all the money washes out when it comes through. Uh, it's not a laundering statement, by the way, <laughs> but I said washing out. Please don't launder money. And so we've got to ask, is your compensation plan based on total revenue increase, job profit increase, net income increase, or raw project volume increase? There are probably others, but those are four that I put down. But your compensation should never not be determined by one of those things. If you're doing compensation on, I like Susie, or I like Jim, or I hope Jim never leaves, or you're in a whirlpool of desperation at that point. Once you've got that, run a pro forma, what ifs, ask yourself, does this pro forma fit our budget? And then put the package together, write it up, put it together, run it back to the pro forma again, just to make sure, and then roll it out. Now, some of you ask, and this is the last thing I'll do, is should you share your numbers with your team? Yeah, if you want to like hate your life, go ahead, do that. We have some people that share percentages and it works okay. I will say this. It's the only thing I'll say about this. Your relationship with your team will fundamentally change the moment you share dollar figures. Why? Money is never logical. It is always psychological. They will never fully understand that a dollar is not a dollar. We train it, but they will never fully understand it because they don't have to go to sleep at night thinking about it. Now, they have other pressures that they deal with, very real pressures that they deal with. Like, could you fire them tomorrow? That's real. So it's not that they don't stay up at night. They do too. But you just stay up about different things. Okay. I want you to think about your questions and go ahead and, in fact, you can go ahead and type them in the chat if you want. So here's a question I'll ask you guys. Do you need help with this stuff? Because that's what we do. We help. This is on purpose. We work with business owners between two and 100 employees to build out the purpose, the people, the process, and the profit leveraging that powerful installation roadmap, which is now stage one of three, by the way, for those of you who have not been around in a while, we have now have a full scope because we've got clients who have been with us nine and a half years and we're growing with them in how we have full scope of this stuff. But still our installation roadmap is that powerful thing to help liberate you from chaos to make time for what matters most. So you can either DIY this. I hope you took screenshots and all that stuff. We try to give, 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 as you well know, or we can help you in person and, uh, and we can do it live actually. So here's what we've done. We've not done this before. We're going to try this. And we get asked all the time, how does your coaching work? We have one goal, and that's to build a business that runs with or without you, and it grows with or without you. Do you hear that little statement? It's not just that it runs without you, but it grows with or without you and makes a real profit. So our clients, because we do level two dashboards, financial dashboards, our clients will typically see their dollar investment come back to them through their profit account, as long as their business is profitable. If it's not profitable, there's, you know, we can try and we do try. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to have more money coming in that's going out. We're not counselors, although we feel like we counsel a lot. And we're not just going to sit around and be like, hey, Jim, do you have a bad day? Like, tell us about it. No, we are coaches professionally trained to walk you through what you need and what you don't need to build a business that runs with or without you. So this is what we build together and implement together. This is that core roadmap actually spelled out. Next week, our team has got a huge mountain to climb is that we're going to be putting a full three-year, 24, 48, 72 week coaching plan together. It's going to be amazing. We've got it written different places, but we're putting it all in one. We have done this hundreds of times. As I told you, we're working with about 90 businesses all around the country. So here's what we're offering. If you are the primary owner, if you're generating a half a million or more, if you, I mean, if you're growing and you're 300,000, 400,000, that's fine too. You've got uh, three or more, or if you're two and you want to grow employees and you really have a desire to grow, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to put this link in the chat window. Let me actually grab this. You can QR code it if you want, but I'm going to put this link in the chat window. This is what it looks like when it pops up. This is Sean. He's one of our amazing coaches. And what I want you to do, there's no strings attached to this. He's going to coach his brains off, just so you know, is I want you to go in. Actually, he has time tomorrow. So you can go into a time slot tomorrow, pick it, and go in and, and set up 30 minutes with him. And what he's going to do is he's going to pull up a pro forma and actually run a scenario with you live. And then he'll give you the pro forma. He'll make a copy of it and give it to you if you want. Again, you won't pay us anything for that. Now, if you want to know how we work with you so that you can pay us, then he'll tell you that. All you need to do is ask and just be like, hey, how do you guys work with people? And you can ask. So 
there are some of you have been around for a while and, and you, the same guy that that guy in Austin said, Hey, I'm in the same spot. So you're in the same spot. And you're like, I got to do something different. Let's go. We've got the capacity. We've clearly got the runway now and the tools to be able to do that. So let me put that in the chat, Sean's schedule. Okay. So, uh, and I'm serious. If you really want help with this scenario, please sign up. This is not like a bait. You guys know that. I don't need to tell you all that. Um, I think you trust us with that. So go ahead and sign up for that. Now, let me go into the chat window, see what questions. Yeah, Chris, click. Absolutely, man. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go back to the front. Somebody asked this question, knowing if our salaries are where they should be. Also figuring out our bonus plan that might work for our company structure. Okay, Christy, hopefully I answered that through this. So a couple, let me go back to a couple of the core fundamentals. All salaries should be based on competency first. So really you need to go back and look at job role and competency. Make sure those two things match. You can pull a market analysis is good, but that's not number one. And then you got to look at your budget, your payroll budget to be able to look at that. The business will tell you if your salaries are where they should be. Scott won't tell you. Your buddy next door won't tell you. The business will tell you if your salary is where it should be. And as it relates to the bonus plan, simple, simple, simple. Incentive equals increase in revenue. Incentive equals increase in revenue. Had another question. It's a balancing act to determine what's market rate fair and a salary I can afford. Absolutely. So this is where you want to go to your association, pull some marketing metrics. Then you want to ask around to some buddies. That's super helpful. But at the end of the day, it's got to come down to your budget. The business can only afford what the business can afford, regardless of the, what the market is doing. Then we've got to start pulling other levers. Is it a pricing problem? Is it an expenditure problem? Is it a market resource problem? Is it, there's all sorts of things. So I want you guys to see this as a board. Remember those old electric boards where you pulled levers and stuff like that? I want you to see this as a board of levers that you pull, right? Up and down, back and forth. All right, we're about to open uh, in June. I plan to offer 401k and profit sharing to them. If you're asking me, if you're saying, hey, Scott, what would you do if you were about to open in June? I wouldn't touch the profit sharing because I don't know if we're profitable. The 401k, what I might do is say, hey, we're researching 401k. Obviously, we got to keep our, our expenses at a minimum as we start up. We're researching 401k and we're going to come with you with information on the 401k in October next steps. We're not sure we're going to start it next year, but we're going to get more information about it. That buys you time to allow and, and now do the research. Don't lie. It buys you time to both research and see what the business is going to do to see what you can afford. Because it's nice to afford all those. We have health insurance. We have 401k. We have disability insurance and life insurance. Our little business. Why? is we were about six years in before we really started to roll that out. And this is a key player. We only roll out one per year, one thing per year. I think that's a key takeaway. Be careful about lumping all that in at once. And you lose the value of the benefit of just being able to give it if you do it all at once. Like that, again, it won't incentivize necessarily. Another question, wanting to be able to pay staff more, but so this, this person is a non-for-profit municipality. And so... This is a, always a challenging question. We want to be able to pay more, but our municipality is not on board. So just doing an amazing job will not bring higher pay. Now, some of you have this challenge because you may not have the money for one of those previous questions. So even if you're in a for-profit business, well, if you're in a for-profit business, you need to be for-profit. <laughs> That's key. So when money is not an option, we have got to look at uh, internal motivating ways. It could be a variety of ways, time off. It could be uh, time together uh, with different people. It could be additional leadership opportunities, or it could be additional benefit opportunities to be able to do things. Go on a business trip or something like that, you know, the uh, municipality pays for whatever. Here's the good news about it. The bad news about it is they took that option away from you. The good news about it, it's made it very clear that they've took that option away from you. And so now you can only select from these options over here. All right, somebody else put in here. Yes, Joshua, I'll come back to that, share your numbers. How would the variable compensation work for a design build firm where there is separate revenue for architecture and separate revenue for construction? We have separate contracts for architecture, separate for construction, and there are pieces of compensation pie that fall in both. I actually think it's easier if you guys are that clean to where you've separated. I'd be curious to know if you've separated P&Ls for uh, the architecture side versus a P&L uh, for the construction side. You can still have the same LLC, but you separate P&Ls. And what you can do is you can start running compensation on the different P&Ls. And here's the key. They now have three components of their compensation. They have a base pay, 
but then they have a construction variable pay and they have an architectural variable pay. So they get paid three ways for the same job. All right, Joshua, you asked, when you say don't share your numbers, could you explain how ambiguous to be office people will know the job costing? So when you have office people that are doing job costing, particularly those of you in construction industry, you're going to have a lot of that. Acknowledge those numbers. So any numbers they already have because they're involved in those, acknowledge those numbers and then set the metrics around the numbers they already have, right? But then there's other numbers. The moment you start dealing with net income for the entire business, that's when it can start to get really challenging because people don't fully understand what that net income goes to when it does that. And so what I would say is use the word discretion as you're doing it. So whatever numbers you've already shared, turn those numbers into trackable numbers that tie directly to variable incentive comp. So I hope that helps. All right, one more. What were the three items in your slide that bonus should be based on? Yeah, let me get back to that. Hang tight. Number one was competency. Number two was sustained performance. Remember, not past peaks. Sustained performance. And number three was market value. Good question. Christy, you said one PL. Uh, sorry, I just said your name. Uh, but with the revenue separated for architecture and construction. Okay, so that's good too. So you can still separate and understand how those go in. And so I would tie the comp, I would tie variable comp to architecture, variable comp to construction. If you can bake it, base it on lump sum billing. It would be super helpful to be able to do that. Some great, great questions uh, that you guys have put in there. Okay, I want you to go back to the chat. I really want to see some of you on that call with Sean. It will, it will tell us that you're taking this really serious uh, about what you're doing to run scenarios with that. I'm going to put that down here back at the bottom. And again, if you want and are interested in working with us as a client, we've got a couple of spots for capacity. Oh, let me pull that back. Capacity, and uh, I want you to ask Sean about it when you guys get together at the end of your time. Again, he's going to help you coach. So go click on that link right there. And I'm about to shut our time down. We're two minutes away from one hour. Hit it. We got it. We got it nice. So thank you all for that. Thank you for your time, your attention. I trust this was helpful. I believe it was helpful, but the only helpful part of it is going to come when you start actually doing something with it, start implementing it. So I want to compel you. I want to beg you. I want to plead with you. Please implement. So go grab a time on Sean's calendar before you leave, please. Just all of you, click on it so it's pulled up on your browser, and then just go put that in right there. So I'm getting a bunch of private messages as well. I don't want to call your names out, even though Christy already did for yours. But all of you who are sending messages, thank you. And I'm really, really grateful. We've got a lot of these masterclasses that we do right now, at least once a month. We may start doing them a little bit more frequent. But would you pass us along to your friends as well? And those of you in the construction space, your subcontractors. Uh, we're actually starting to work with a big production home builder around the country, multiple geographies, and we're starting to do a lot of business coaching for their subcontractors as well. So if you would be so kind as to share us uh, with your friends um, and those who own businesses in that space, well, we would be delighted. And also take Sean's link and have them sign up. We would love to meet with them and walk them through this as well. All right, everybody. Hey, I'm really, really grateful. Happy Thursday. By the way, it's super special day for me. Big win. Ash and I celebrate 26 years of marriage today. So uh, we're not celebrating tonight. We're talking. We're on a three and a half hour drive, but we got date night tomorrow night at a chop house and we're fired up about it. So that's my big win for the day. All right, everybody. Hey, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, your attention, and I hope that we can help you be liberated from chaos to make time for what matters most. Go sign up with Sean. Take care, everybody.